Take, take two. <laughs> welcome to our morning worship at St. John's and welcome to everyone who is watching us on the live stream or may watch us later on the um, YouTube. Pray that you'll have a, time, a real time of blessing here this morning. I thought that we would uh, have a psalm just to get us into the mood, because we've not had any music or anything like that to get us to think sort of worshipfully. So I thought we'd have a psalm, which is Psalm 145, reading from the New Living Translation. I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. Everyone will share the story of your wonderful goodness. They will sing with joy about your righteousness. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. All your works will praise you, Lord, and your faithful followers will praise you. They will speak of the glory of your kingdom. They will give examples of your power. They will tell about your mighty deeds and about the majesty and glory of your reign. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their loads. The eyes of all look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in everything he does. He is filled with kindness. The Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries for help and rescues them. The Lord protects all those who love him, but he destroys the wicked. I will praise the Lord and may everyone on earth bless his holy name forever and ever. So we're going to have our notices now. It's always good to have notices. It means that the church is busy doing something. So next Sunday, there's going to be family time over in the church hall at quarter to ten. Friends and heroes. Um, I've met my son and granddaughter coming out this morning and they said how much they'd enjoyed themselves so do come along as a family to that next Sunday. Next Sunday at 11 o'clock morning service streamed live and in the church. And then please join us if you've got Zoom. Uh, join our Zoom prayers next Wednesday evening at half past seven. So now let's begin our service. Just remind you that um, you say the words in yellow when they are responses. And I say the words in white. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind.
As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. And now we approach the Lord in sorrow for the things that we've done wrong, the things we've done in thought, word and deed through the week. So spend just a second or so thinking about that. If it's me, it's going to take a lot longer than a second or so. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess we have failed you, as did your first disciples. We ask for your mercy and your help. Our selfishness betrays you. Lord, forgive us. We fail to share the pain of your suffering. Lord, forgive us. We run away from those who abuse you. Lord, forgive us. We are afraid of being known to belong to you. Lord, forgive us. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us of all our sins that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the church's special prayer for today. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now Andrew is going to come and bring our Bible reading, and then Tim is going to speak to us. Our, <clears throat> our Bible reading this morning is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 24. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So if you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves, instead you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. 
For we know that all creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us, as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sarah, can I ask you to bring up an, bring us an artificial flower? I forgot to grab one. Either Sarah will do. Thank you. Well, it's, it, isn't it great to be in church? Yes, right, let's hear a big cheer. <laughs> oh, how good is it? It's been a long time, hasn't it? Oh, there's some good artificial flowers. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, do you know, it's, it's quite emotional, actually, being in front of people this week. I'm so used to just talking to um, my phone. And uh, today, I'm not only talking to my phone, so... Uh, I'm just sorry that I know some people would love to have been here, but are still in lockdown. And we, we, you are part of us, although you're not here. Do feel that we are one in Christ. So if you're watching us live or a recording later on, just know that we love you and your family. Uh, on reading through this passage, the thing that really jumped out at me what I believe that God is saying to us is, don't be artificial. In, in other words, are you acting like the real deal? Or like this artificial flower, looking good, but no life in you? Looking pretty and polished, but not genuine? Last week we saw how God has got us once we've given ourselves to him, that we're not getting out of his grips, just going back to Romans 8, 1 and 2. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. And in John 29, sorry, John chapter 10, verse 29, we read, no one can snatch them out of my hands. That's Jesus saying that. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch any of them out of my Father's hand as well. So we're double-handed God. We're safe in the hands of Jesus. Now let's look at the inheritance that we have once we've given our lives to Jesus. And uh, if you're watching this on, on YouTube, maybe you could pause and go and grab your Bible quick and, and look through as we go. Um, verse 14, we are his children. Just, just stop and think about that for a moment. Let's, I'm going to pause between each bit. We are his heirs of God's glory. Is that exciting? We are heirs of God's glory. What does that mean? I mean, just that little sentence I could take away and say, just ponder on that for a week. What does it mean to be heirs of God's glory? Are we excited about that? I hope the answer is yes. We live by the power of the Spirit, verse 13, Verse 15, because the Holy Spirit, God with, within us. 
It's getting good, isn't it? And we've got the right to call God Abba or Daddy. What a a, a fantastic right that is. And uh, it's wonderful, isn't it? When somebody calls you Daddy. I, I know that I had a, an unexpected gift on Father's Day and somebody said, you've been like a dad to me. And it brought me to tears that somebody said that. And it really, it was, oh, wow. But that's what Father God is to us, isn't he? He's our daddy. He's adopted us and said, you're mine. I've got you. You're mine. I'm your daddy. I'm your father. I've got you. We have this wonderful inheritance. Am I? Are you? Are we acting like his children? Are we acting like we are heirs to God's glory? Oh, am I acting like I'm Holy Spirit empowered? You know, a few years ago, as a lot of you know, I, I was lucky enough to own a Harley Davidson motorbike. Woohoo! How good was that? You know, I do miss it sometimes. It'd been my dream for years, and that dream came true. I was part of a group of people who were Harley riders. And it felt good. And one of the things that I found after a little while that most Harley Davidson owners never ride their bikes. You think that? In case they get them dirty. And and to show you, yesterday I went on Gumtree to look at the small ads uh, and see the Harley Davidsons for sale. And the first Harley Davidson I saw advertised for sale was two years old with just 400 miles on the clock. The second one was five years old with 3,500 miles on the clock, which is nothing, is it? And the best one I saw was 13 years old with just 6,200 miles on the clock. See, these bikes have been owned but hardly used. And the list just went on and on. Uh, (laughs) Is our faith like that? Owned but hardly used. Is our faith like that? You know, one day I I went over to the Harley Davidson showroom in Chesterfield and um, it was a bit of a rainy day and they were having an open day over there and they had, they'd got um, a band over there and all sorts going on. And also a free raffle as well. So it was for the free raffle draw. I wanted to go over actually. But, so I got on my motorbike and I went over. And you know, I was, the place was packed. And everybody there almost had a Harley Davidson t-shirt or leather jacket. And their wives had the Harley Davidson boots and the, their leather jackets on. But because it was raining, there was only half a dozen of us had turned up on motorbikes. The rest were getting out of cars. It's said that most Harley Davidson owners spend more on polish than than paint, than petrol, sorry. Not wanting to take their bikes out on a wet day in case their bikes get dirty. In fact, a lot of owners are proud to say that their bikes have never been out in the rain. Again, I ask, is our faith like that? Are we in the club for just wanting to polish our faith in church on a Sunday? See, they've all got these wonderful machines that they hardly ever ride. They are acting the part of a biker, not living the part. Are we living like Christians or just acting the part? We've got the Holy Spirit living in us. God wanting to work through us. 
wanting to be his hands and his feet in the world today? Are we just acting the part or are we living the part? You know, I, I know of one person who felt called to go to a certain church that me and Sarah used to go to. It, it, and this church met in a school and it was on the corner of what was deemed to be a rough estate. Well, in Farnborough, once you've moved to Anfield, you, you know, and been in Liverpool for a little while, you realise that there's no really rough estates in Farnborough. And this, this lady would felt called to come to this church that was on the corner of this so-called rough estate, but wouldn't come in case her car got vandalised. For three years we went to that church, and uh, before I went off to, to train at college, and at no time did we see any car ever vandalised. And uh, it's just uh, mad, isn't it, that somebody was scared like that. Verse 17 from our passage, we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. So that's the hard bit, isn't it? Just a minute, I don't want to suffer. I don't know anybody who wants to suffer. Do you want to suffer? No. So what does that, that look like? For one person, it, it did not even mean driving into a church car park where they thought God might be calling them in case their car got scratched. Are we going to be like those Harley riders and keep our faith nice and polished once a week in our church buildings? Are, are we ready to do the stuff? To get mucky, to be ready to share in the suffering of Christ? To actually give the Holy Spirit a chance to work through us? to keep our faith and start telling and sharing that good news that God loves us so much that he thought that each one of us was worth dying for. In verse 18 of our reading we are told, yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for the future day when God will reveal who his children really are. In that verse, the way I read it is that Paul has the expectation that Christians will suffer for their faith. I can't read it any other way. When I look at the life of Jesus in the Bible, he was not selling a design of faith where you needed to get the T-shirt, the music CD and the DVD box set of the latest Tickle my spiritual ears, preacher. Now, none of them sell these things in themselves are wrong. And I'm overemphasizing to make a point. Because we all like to hear good teaching and preaching, don't we? But we do need to be very clear that we've had, we have a simple message that a lot of the time I believe is added to too much. The message that God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. And if we turn around from the bad stuff we're doing and follow him, he will fill us with his Holy Spirit and we will start living for him, knowing that God has called us to be part of his family, not just in the here and now, but into eternity. I believe we need dirty feet more than a polished faith. Let's allow Jesus to lead us to those people who are dying without the knowledge of him. When we start taking risks rather than staying in the confines of a church building, that's when I mostly see the Holy Spirit working. Because another word for risk is faith. When I read my Bible, it's when people act in faith, not, not caring about the risk that I see the, the power of the Holy Spirit displayed. Or am I reading the book of Acts wrong? When I've spoken to witches who've become Christians, they tell me that they never saw churches as any sort of threat at, at all until the people started coming out of the building. 
the first question that we should be asking as we wake up each morning is, how do you want to use me today, Lord? In Acts 8, after the Christians come under persecution, we read that the believers were scattered throughout Samaria and Judea. So when persecution came, the Christians scattered and the good news of Jesus reached more people. Over the last few months, we know our, our church has been closed because of, uh, not because of persecution, but because of this horrible disease. In effect, our church has been scattered. I know because of lockdown, we've not had the same chance to get out. But we have had the opportunity, and I know a lot of us have taken that opportunity, to get to know our neighbours better. Because they're the only people we can talk to over the fence. How have we used that opportunity? Have we had the opportunity to speak to them about the faith that we have in Jesus? How are we going to use these opportunities in the future? Now that we've got to maybe got to know our neighbours better. In Matthew 5.13, Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth. For what good is salt if it's lost its flavour? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. Each day, let's ask ourselves, how can I as an individual be the salt of the earth? Be the flavour of God to those around me? And how can we as a church better be salty people to bring the taste of God into our community? Let's uh, just finish by reading the last three verses of our reading. Then I'm going to pray. Here we go. And we believe has also grown even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. Let's pray. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word this morning. Just thank you that we can call you Father that you empower us by your Holy Spirit. And now pray, Lord, that you would take away all fear, that we'd be ready to get dirty feet for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Tim. Shall we just spend a moment of silence just pondering over what Tim has said to us? I just feel I should share with you something that my son-in-law, Mark, told me. He'd gone into school, because he, he's a secondary school teacher, he'd gone into school to cover for a, another member of staff. And he told me that there was a, a colleague, a lady, who was so terrified of catching corona that she'd shut herself in her room locked the door and wouldn't let anybody in. She wouldn't talk to any of the other members of staff and she just cried all the time. And that, that quite upset me, hearing that. That someone should be so afraid. And I don't think we realise how much the Lord helps us with that. That we face the day and we're not consumed with fear. 
because we know that we have Jesus in our lives by his spirit and that our lives are in his care and in his hand. So we don't need to be devastated by fear. But maybe in your prayers you could remember her. I don't know what her name is, but the Lord knows. So now I call on Sarah to come and lead us in our prayers. All right, shall we pray? Father God, thank you for your guiding hand in our lives. Sometimes we may not feel as though you are with us, but you are. Sometimes we see two sets of footprints in the sand. Sometimes we see only one. And it's when we see only one set of footprints that that is the time you are carrying us instead of just walking with us. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, in this season, in all our lives, we pray for your continued protection over us, our families, our friends, our nation, our world. That you bring this pandemic under control. That we bravely step out into this new way of living, knowing that you are with us and that we walk out by faith and in harmony with the Holy Spirit to live as you wish us to live, as God's people, as your disciples, and that as we do so, those around us are drawn nearer to you and that they seek knowledge and comfort in you, as do we. In Jesus' name, amen. As the school year officially draws to an end, we raise up to you, Lord, the children, teachers, parents and carers who have been forced into a new way of living and teaching. Undoubtedly, they are all very tired and uncertain about the future and what will happen in September. We ask you, Father, to bring peace and quietness to their, their busy minds and hearts so that they can know that, as in everything, you work things out for our good and that they know that they can cast their burden upon you and you will look after them. Amen. We come before you, Lord, knowing that your love is infinite and that you care about us and every aspect of our life. In this time of economic uncertainty, help us to trust that all of our security is in you and remembering that you always have and always will provide for our needs, and that apart from you, we can do nothing. You made us in your image. Lord, guide us in the knowledge that we all have worth in ourselves, and that we are all of equal value in your eyes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Do the Lord's Prayer. So, rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us. So we pray. If you want to say the words in yellow. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So thank you to everyone for attending here this morning. I hope you feel blessed and uplifted by being in church and being in the presence of the church family. And we do pray a blessing on everyone who's watching on the internet uh, whenever they choose to watch it. So let's just bow our heads now and bless each other as we go. 
Heavenly Father, please be with us and bless us today and in the week ahead. We pray that we will uh, wake up in the morning and ask you, what do you want me to do today? How do you want me to be your person today? It might be something quite big and it might be something quite small. But we pray, Lord, that we recognise the opportunity when it comes and that we don't pass it by. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be prompting us through this coming week so that we know what you would like us to do and that we will take joy in doing it. So be with us each one now. In Jesus' name. Amen.